why it's unavailable. But this week, we should be good with our normal schedule, which is tonight you're here, Squire Squad, Table Talk Tuesday. Thursday, we'll be back with Elegant Magics, finally, finally, finally resolving the uh, time loop arc. Uh, we weren't able to have everyone last week, which is why we did a Monster Hearts one-shot, which you should go check out. Uh, there was lots of smooching and some murder, you know, as you do. Um, and we also had some, you know, friends of the channel guests. So yeah, definitely check that out. Um, this Saturday, we'll be back with Star Power, which is our fate game. And Sunday should be back with uh, Basin, Thursday's children. Um, and then just looking ahead at our scheduling, uh, next week may be a little bit weird. Um, Tuesday will not be one of our regularly scheduled games because I'll be unavailable, but maybe the rest of these lovely people will put something together, or maybe they'll decide, hey, we deserve a night off and we're going to rest, and that's totally valid too. So keep an eye out on our Twitter and our Discord to see what we're up to. That is the best way to keep informed of what we are doing. Except when Twitter fails at scheduled tweets like it did tonight because there was no tweet about this game until 30 minutes ago. Oops. Technology shakes fist. At, you know, angry man shakes fist at the sky. Um, uh, I am rambling a bit as we are wont to do. That's how you know this is Tabletop Tuesdays. Um, I think it's time we all introduce ourselves. Um, so looks like we start with David. Uh, yeah, uh, David, see me here on Tuesday nights, and tonight I am playing Chrysalis, uh, also known as Kevin, and uh, out of the Transformed playbook. Hello everybody, I'm LB Hack'em Up, you can find me at LB Hack'em Up on the Twitters and the Twitches. I'm going to be playing Sabrina, aka Corvid, tonight, and she is the Outsider playbook. Everyone, uh, my name is Tyler. Uh, I will be playing Flint, uh, aka the Silver Wolf, and he is the Pool playbook. Hey everybody, I'm Wings. I'll be at Twitter.com or uh, at Twitter. I'm going to be playing Chloe tonight. Uh, you might play. And that leaves me. I'm Alex, owned to some guy on the internet. Uh, I run this <laughs> this show, and I play everyone else. Um, so, it has been a while since we've played. Let's do a bit of a recap of what happened last time. We were doing a little bit of that off stream, and <laughs> all of us trying to remember what happened. So, previously on Squatter Squad, I should turn on. Some slightly suspenseful music, perhaps. I don't know if this is the one I want. I have two songs in the suspenseful category. Maybe I want the other one. Anyway. Previously on the Squire Squad, Flint was out of town, and there was a apparent werewolf attack on a company in the city. And so the Paladins asked Flint's team to figure out, hey, is this your friend? Do we need to be concerned? You should figure this out before, you know, we have to bring in the big guns. And so they went to his family's estate because the Silver Hounds are one of the richest families in the city of Port Arbor. And they found Flint's family's house on the estate. And no one was there. They ran into Cornelius Silverhound, the patriarch of the Silverhound family, and Flint's grandpa, who kindly asked the squires to leave, though uh, Chrysalis, using his limited ESP, was able to pick up the message uh, to, to the lines of, Reginald, you messed up, you're going on exile. And so the squires regrouped. They attempted to reach uh, Flint, who they were told was away skiing in Canada, uh, but he wasn't answering his phone, and so Sabrina used her alien tech to try and figure out the number to call, reached uh, Flint's mom, and got a very confusing conversation in a series of barks and growls, and as a side effect of using that alien technology, Sabrina's own vocal pathways were rewired and 
she also spoke and barked and growls for the rest of the evening. And so, uh, Chloe and Kevin decided to have a group movie night and watch some classic horror movies to help reset her vocal pathways. There was some uh, alternative history being taught to Sabrina that The War of the Worlds was a documentary. Uh, let's see, what else? What else? Um, so Sabrina also told them a bit about her own home planet and how there's a creature that eats your shadow, which Kevin was confused by. Um, let's see. Finally, Lint, uh, out of nowhere, texted Chloe. Uh, it was a new number, but Chloe immediately recognized Flint's uh, distinctive texting style. And so the two uh, caught back up and started asking uh, Flint. Uh, started asking Flint about his cousin Reggie and how uh, there is some concerning development and he needs to get back here soon. Fortunately, his family's impromptu vacation was coming to an end and he would be returning the next day. Uh, upon seeing Flint in person and picking him, picking him up at the airport in the Kirby craft, uh, they started filling him in on what happened, you know, showing him the video of the werewolf attack and asking him about his family's business, which Flint's uh, awareness of the family business is that his grandpa is proud of him for joining the Squires, but kind of wishes he would tone down the, uh, the werewolf aspect a little bit, but Flint's... Uh, nuclear family, immediate family of his mom, who the reason she speaks in Barks and Bells is because she's a lady with a wolf head, uh, and dad uh, are not particularly involved in the family business, and Flint's dad does not want Flint involved either, and we'll tell him what it's about when he's older. But the, uh, the Squire Squad decided, okay, there's some things we should investigate here, uh, Reggie is perhaps leaving town very soon, as he is going on exile, so we need to figure out what's going on there. Uh, they weren't able to reach him directly, but they were able to figure out where he lived, and so flew over to his penthouse apartment. Uh, and again, using alien technology and stealth and Sabrina's own shape-shifting abilities, she snuck in uh, to the apartment where there was a flurry of activity, uh, all sorts of people, you know, hastily packing things up, you know, very clearly looking like, you know, Reggie was trying to get out of town. Um, what else? Something, something, alien technology, something, something, putting a tracker on Reggie, uh, and so started following him as he and his uh, entourage left his penthouse, and were starting to head towards the edges of the city. Uh, at a certain point, However, the uh, entourage split up, one half heading towards the docks, one half heading towards the airport. In a surprisingly reckless move, uh, Chrysalis and Hemlock jumped out of the perfectly functional Kirby craft to go chasing after the team, uh, the half heading to the airport, while Sabrina and uh, Flint stayed in the Kirby craft to follow to the docks. Uh, at the airport, Team Thoughts Go Zoom found a Silver Hound branded jet uh, loading up with all the various things uh, that you know the entourage was taking to deliver, and they started figure, trying to figure out ways to delay it. Kevin attempted to psychically influence the pilots to not great success, but Chloe did manage to gunk up the plane's insides using her. I'm trying to, I was going to say plant kinesis. There has to be a better word, flora kinesis. Technically, it's body transmutation. Yes, what? but uh, kind of flavored it as uh, flora kinesis or something along those lines. Uh, but yes, so seems to be uh, things perhaps handled a little over there. Meanwhile, at the docks, Team Head Empty has uh, found the other half of the uh, uh, entourage loading up a yacht there, um, titled, oh, I saw this earlier, where was it? Um, 
Uh, the Lunar Eclipse is what the uh, super yacht is named. Uh, you know, real subtle, the uh, Silverhound family here. Uh, and so Sabrina decided to sneak into the water and transform into something underneath and perhaps try to sabotage the yacht's propulsion, the rudders, something along those lines. Well, Flint decided to approach his cousin Reggie. Uh, he you know, showed up. Reggie asked his younger cousin what he was doing there and then beckoned him over for a more private conversation. Flint told his cousin that he was here to help out, that Grandpa had wanted him to start you know, helping out with the family business, at which point Reggie asked Flint for a passcode. Flint, of course, did not know a passcode. He had not actually been asked by Grandpa to help out with the family business. But Reginald took this as a bad sign and said, Shit, Flint, I didn't want you to get involved like this, and began transforming into a werewolf. That is where we left things off last time. So, one thing we do need to do at the start of the session is add one to the team pool. So, I don't know who of you wants to handle that. whatever your relationship is, just by um, just by being an adult, he does have influence over you. And so when someone with influence over you tells you who you are or how the world works, accept what they say or reject their influence. Uh, if you accept what they say, I'll adjust your labels accordingly. If you want to keep your labels as they are, you must reject their influence. So first I need to have him tell you who you are or how the world works. And so um, I guess before we even get to that, Flint, you see your cousin Reggie starting to wolf out. What do you do? I mean, he is clearly taking right. an aggressive posture. Yeah, no, I, I think I think I get that. Um, I'm going to also wolf out, um, but uh, I'm not going to try and fight him. I'm either going to try and run away or, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. So he wolfs out, sees you wolfing out as well. <clears throat> and says, "Well, shit, Steel. This is uh quite the hairy situation we found ourselves in." <laughs> Look, I get it. You're a good kid, but if Grandpa's got you doing his dirty work, I'm heading out. This doesn't have to get ugly, but. You need to, you know, stand down. You either, you either listen to what Grandpa says, and this turns ugly, or you back away, and I, I rough you up a little bit, but no one has to come out of this missing any body parts they'd rather keep. Uh, I think Flint's just gonna say, like, point at him, like, you guys are bad, and you're not gonna get away with it. 
and then he's gonna run. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to think if this is some kind of move that you are doing here. Um, hmm. I think Reggie is definitely confused for a minute. Um, so you start running away. Let's cut over to Sabrina. What are you doing? You dived into the water to try and sabotage the yacht. What are your plans there? Oh, right. I was under, yeah, uh, flying up. Uh, doing a stealth fly up, I think. Mm-hmm. So, for enter, I mean, that's, hmm. I don't, I think you're able to do that. I don't know what's that. going He's, on, yeah. Yeah, but so you're easily able to fly over, you know, sneak up and get in position next to the yacht. Uh, I don't think that's going to take a roll. So what is it that you attempt to do? I can see what's going on. Uh, so you're flying up above. Uh, can't see anything yet because Reggie took yeah. point over behind some of the like shipping containers, but you see the rest of, you know, all the I don't want to call them minions, but you know, the other people are loading up the yacht in preparation for it setting sail. Um I, I think I wouldn't I mean I wouldn't do anything until until I saw what's going on. I think I would check to see where Flint was. Okay. So yeah, you are well, cause... I do recall that um, you, Sabrina said that she was going to like try to do, do what she could to, to mess with the ship while Flint went and confronted Reggie, and the fact that she can't see him now, I don't know, might be a little concerning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I guess. Uh, I guess the question is, is Sabrina going to follow through with that plan, or is her concern for what's going on with Flint going to override her initial uh, ideas? Probably. I mean, she's always concerned about Flint. Have you met him? Of course. Who wouldn't be? Okay, so you, uh, you hesitate before diving into the water, and you see Flint dashing away, but he is now in wolf form. He is now the silver wolf. Oh, uh, uh I have and... not sabotaged the boat yet? No. Okay. Uh, I, Sabrina's in full stealth mode. There are no lights on her at all. Um, but as soon as she sees Flint take, he is, you're running away from the boat? Generally, that would be yeah. the direction yeah. Flint is. Uh, so her eyes just go boom, and then, like, turn bright green and her face mask lights up and she's gonna give chase after the person who's chasing okay you don't yeah so i think at that point you do see reggie uh burst out you see another wolf uh burst out and start chasing after flint uh the the mundane workers you know they kind of they all kind of stop and some of them you know go to take cover some of them are you know like hustling up to keep moving. Some of them are like, you know, it's the it's the silver hounds wolfing out. This is this is what you get for, you know, when you take on this job. Yeah. Um let's see. So So Flint, you are running away. Sabrina, you are now flying up above. Reggie is giving chase. Um He's kind of calling things out to you, Flint, but you can't quite make out what he's saying. You get the gist that it is, you know, I'm going to get you, you know, I'm going to, it's not going to be, it's going to go bad. Um, But, yeah, let's... It doesn't sound like very fr friendly talk. <laughs> no, let's see, is there... I'm looking at the moves to see if there's something that makes sense here. Mm -hmm. Um... I mean, Sabrina, you could assess the situation if you wanted to, figure out what is going on. Um, uh, and, yeah, yeah. And I think when you could roll to provoke someone. 
Yeah, sure. I'll uh I'll roll that. Flint got Monday. a six. Oh god. No, no, no. Uh, for you, it would be superior. Oh, superior. Okay, good. Um, is this a... If if I have influence over Flint, do I get plus one? Not exactly, because it's not specifically with Flint. It's kind of a okay. whole thing. Alright. Oh, I you missed. didn't need it. Oh no, no you, Flint you missed. Got a 13. Oh shit! I got the six. Okay, so um, we'll resolve Sabrina's first because you were kind of scoping things out first. Um, so uh, on a ten plus, you ask two, and you get to take plus one while acting on the answers. You can ask what here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? Here is in the greatest danger. Who here is most vulnerable to me? How can we best end this? Um, how can we best end? Okay. Um, you get the sense that because Reggie has wolfed out as well, that is enough guilt for you to act in capacity as a squire and you know do something to bring him in. Well, you know, more actual investigating will happen later to figure out mm. if he's you know the werewolf trio, et cetera, et cetera. But right. so. Uh, incapacitating Reggie is now best and let's end this quickly. Um, and then uh, what here can I use to to uh, uh, uh take it down fast, I guess. Like, are, is there, is, are there nets that are big enough, or there, is it something like that? Um, this is more of a, this is a special section of the docks you gather for the super rich, because, you know, mm -hmm. there's a super yacht, and there's also shipping containers and such, so. Yeah. It's kind of a hodgepodge of being, like, part passenger public, part. Mm -hmm. Uh, industrial, um, but so there are plenty of shipping containers around. Uh, there's a crane, like one of those giant dockyard cranes uh, nearby. It's not quite in position to do anything here. Um, there's also the yacht. There's the people and their SUVs and you know a truck or two with lots of boxes of stuff available. Um, So there's plenty of environmental props that okay. you could take advantage of. Okay. Uh, and so if you make use of those, you get plus one, and when you are acting to incapacitate red, you get plus one. Okay. okay. Now let's jump over to Flint's. Uh, currently, it's a miss for provoke someone. What happens to miss? Nothing really happens on a miss, so you can either choose to take the miss and mark a uh, potential mark experience, or perhaps uh, you can see if Corvid can use a team from the pool to help you bump that up to the success. I'll go ahead and take the miss, um, because I only need one more potential to, to level up to advance. Okay, and so a reminder for you all, when you hit those five potential and you unlock an advancement, you can do it immediately. You don't need to wait for uh, you know, a short rest or anything, because those don't exist in that. So you can... And that's definitely something I didn't look at at all, so... <laughs> yep. Um, uh -uh. Does it mention it on your, on the whole 20 sheet, or no, that's going to be something you'll have to look at the playbook for? Um, yeah, yeah. But so, perhaps, okay, so we'll give Tyler some time to think about that. Let's cut over to Team Kotsko Zoom. So, there is the, uh, you know, the, they're still loading up the plane. Uh, Chrysalis, you found, you know, you realize that your attempts to influence the pilots were 
less than successful. Uh, Hemlock, you have confidently gummed up the works of the plane. Um, but at about this time, you see, because um, over here, there is Reggie's personal assistant. I think her name was Amanda. You see her take a phone call. Uh, you're a bit too far away to actually hear it, but she tenses up and suddenly starts barking out orders to people and they start hustling. So something has happened and they seem to be trying to kick it up uh, into a faster gear to get things ready for takeoff. Is there anything you two would like to do or what do you do in response to this? And we'll say that you're able to sneak back over to a hiding spot you were in and actually confer. So, is the plane kaput? Like, are they going to be able to take off? I don't know. Do I do I know whether or not the plane is going to be fixed in time to get away? As far as you can tell, they haven't even noticed that you have messed with the internals. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think that thing's going to fly, but they're aware. Okay. To some degree, uh, it's kind of bad. That's that's kind of bad, right? I mean, I guess it depends on if it starts to take off. Or not. <laughs> it stays on the ground. Well, you know what? Actually, maybe this is a good thing. They try to fly that plane. It's hero work to stop them. That's true. Yeah, we are we're tied up and not being allowed to do stuff, aren't we? Yeah. It's still hero work if you cause the thing that you're trying to save people from. Yeah, just hope the paladins don't find out about that part. How many times did Spider-Man or Superman do collateral damage? I mean, come on. <laughs> just because other people did it doesn't mean it's a good thing. Gwen Stacy. I cannot be expected. Yeah. Act rationally. <laughs> Uh, all right. Um, it fires faster. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> Ooh. Sounds like maybe you are willing to just see how things progress and then act accordingly. Are they still trying to load the plane up? Yeah, they're still loading it up. You know, you see people, they're moving fast, they're starting to like toss boxes, you know. One misses the mark and falls, and someone goes trying to get it, and they're just like, leave it! And, you know, trying to quickly wrap this up. Okay, so they're not too... They're trying to load it up, but they're not... Like, if I were to break the conveyor belt or something that's going up there, they'd probably just be like, well, F it, let's just leave them. <laughs> like... uh, well, so it's... It's... Um... The, the way they're loading up the plane, it's one of those ones where, like, the cargo ramps down in the back, and so they're walking things up. All right. <laughs> so there's a big opening in the back of the plane? Yep. Is stuff, like, tied in there? Yeah, I mean, once things are in there, people are strapping it down. Um, okay. Uh, can I telekinesis and try and break a bunch of the straps holding the the boxes and stuff. Okay, that sounds like it would be an Unleash Your Powers roll, so please roll plus three. All right. Uh... Okay, so yeah, on a hit, you do it. So you extend your senses out a bit, um, and you can tell because you are focusing on it, uh, you might be a bit too far away from Hemlock for you to notice this exactly, but uh, Chrysalis, you do get the sense as you're reaching out and you're able to, you know, vibrate the uh, the straps at the right frequency that, you know, they snag on something and, you know, uh, they don't fully, unless you are trying to, they don't fully, uh, you know, dramatically snap and obviously snap, but they are certainly weakened snap at the slightest provocation. I, I think I want them to dramatically snap. Okay, uh, so they do. Uh, one of the people in the plane 
kind of goes ow and like holds hold the side of their face and for a second you're worried that you took this dude's eye out he takes it away and it's just you no know, it like got him across the cheek but um and, you know at this everyone you know goes on high alert because something just happened so they realize oh wait something's going on and so some of the uh some of the other people around they uh you know people are still trying to load things up but uh you see getting out of one of the SUVs uh, a couple people with some uh you know assault rifles and they start kind of looking around but you get the sense that the plane will be much more delayed at this point all right have I done enough to clear and secure, take a foolhardy action without talking to your team? <laughs> you clear conditions at the end of the scene. Ah, dang. All right. <laughs> yep. But yes, this will be enough. Cool. Uh, we do have backup on the I know you contacted the uh, Paladins. Oh, I had that somewhere in my note that, oh, that there were you got the sense from, I think it was, oh yeah, as you were heading there, you called in the musketeer, and he said that the judge was clearly delaying getting you all a warrant to fully, you know, you know, arrest people and Corruption. stop things going here. No! Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so, while, uh, you know, guys with, uh, that's coming up, uh, I'm locked for instance, says, like, we do have back, right? Yeah, maybe. Depends on the musketeer. Listen, one way or another, we're not going to let that plane get off the ground. Yeah. I'm going to quote uh, my past move in space. Uh, when you commit yourself to save someone or defeat a terrible enemy, Mark a condition uh, and take plus one ongoing to all rolls directly to the bad roll. Okay. Um, there are other things there, but that doesn't happen until the end of a scene. Yeah. So I'm going to take insecure. That all just right. seems. Yes. <laughs> that just seems right in the situation. Sure. Um, okay. So so that's that. We're gonna wait. To see uh, if. That plane to go try and take off. Dang. How yep. well hidden are we? <laughs> oh, gosh. I think I said more there were some, you know, some shrubs, but it's also, you know, it's an airport. They try and keep things pretty clear so that there's nothing that's going to get in the way of the plane. So you are like behind a chrysalis and hemlock sized bush, which hemlock probably, you know, enhanced a bit using her powers. But I, well, I imagine there's a, like a bush with a hat on it, and then there's just chrysalis standing next to it. <laughs> so you are slightly more hidden than that, but yes, <laughs> basically, you two are in the only obvious hiding spot right now, but you are not currently seen. All right. As or far as know. I see it, if they uh, attack us, it's self defense. If that plane tries to get off the ground in the state that it's in, we're going to be saving lives. So, that's my justification. I guess we could just surrender, right? Okay. We'd be like, we're just, if they come at us with guns, we'd be like, we're, we're at the, you know, sorry, we're on the airport property. We're, we're teenagers. Children. We're teenagers in costume. Man, I just always look like this. <laughs> Also, I guess that is a good question, Chris. Is if you've taken out your, you know, your your paladin safety vest and grown out your oh. spikes. No, this is not official paladin duty yet. So no <laughs> paladin safety vest. I'm going rogue. All right, but Hemlock is very much in costume. Yeah, Hemlock is full duty, but honestly, like she can just like shoot, take it off. Right, because so. it is planned. All right, I guess that's a backup option. What are you scared of? A couple of guns? No, we're just not allowed to. We're not supposed to fight them. I don't want to hurt any of these guys <laughs> until we're allowed to hurt them. <laughs> I guess if I guess so, we could surrender, and then if they do anything that's illegal, then they've done an illegal thing, and we are just allowed to fight them, right? Uh, 
that's generally how it works. That yes, if you see illegal <laughs> things happening as a squire, then yes, you it's do. True. You get like a what? a temporary what the... reprieve from not having a warrant. You know, it's what are the kind gun laws after the fact? What are the gun laws here? Are they what? allowed to have SMGs? You imagine no, but there it is also. You know, there are some weird corporate bylaws that might allow for it if you know they have you know, uh, what it's like the opposite of reasonable doubt, like reasonable expectation that they might be attacked by supervillains or something. That's just kind of a a bylaw that a lot of corporations <laughs> take advantage of here. To be fair, we don't look very. Go either way for us. All right, I think that's the current plan. So, yes, I just wait and see what happens. So, as you you two continue to deliberate, you see kind of the last boxes get loaded up. You see they almost have people just like holding them, like they're just trying to shove them all into like one spot because the straps seem to have all broken. So they're. You know, doing ad hoc uh, securing of the containers and the, the cargo and stuff, but people are loading up into the plane. You even see the, the men with the guns, like, get up onto the ramp. You know, they are still kind of looking around, but everyone loads up onto the plane and it starts taxiing. It still seems capable of taxiing. Uh, I'm sure nothing could go wrong. Yep, so uh, let's cut back over to the, the doc team, shall we? Hey, question. Yes. Um, so as discussed, uh, I will not be long in this game. Uh, would now be an appropriate time to unlock my moment of truth. Um, how many uh, advancements have you taken before? None. So I think you need to take a little, at least one more or at least that's how it normally would be. Um, I'm pulling up the uh, playbooks just to double check. It's in the first list. I think you can choose it twice, right? I, I, you um, yes, it is. Like on, like you get it. You get basically one. Yeah, yeah, you've got to. Well, so, you. So yeah, that's where I was getting confused. So yes, you can just unlock it right at the beginning, uh, <laughs> but once you use it. You know, it, you can't use it again unless you, you've done the five advancements and then can pick from the advanced advancements list, at which point you can get it again. So it's like, you do still need to get it if you wanted to. Yes. All right. Yep. That makes sense. Right. And with, so you're saying, like, when you get your first advancement, you can do it? Yes. So if that is what you are choosing for your advancement, yes, you can unlock oh, your I don't know. truth. The crew, thematically? You, you did just advance, didn't you? Yeah, I mean... It's a slap bang werewolf fight. I don't see any reason not. I figure, yeah. Why not? Uh, because uh, confronting Reggie already is going to uh, set me in a difficult position with my grandpa, so why not take him out? Right. Wait, like, so... take him out? Family business. Damn. All right. I'd probably not take him out, but like, you know, do the yeah. hero thing. So, you have that as an option. You don't need to immediately use it, but whenever you want. Uh, and so, for those unfamiliar with masks, uh, each playbook has a moment of truth, which is basically using their ultimate, using their super move. Uh, they all have kind of their own, you know, narrative flavor to it, but generally it is an opportunity for the players to step into the role of saying, hey, I'm taking control. This is what happens. And, you know, I will offer some guidance and stuff here and there as needed. But for the most part, it is you as a player going to be like, okay, this is what I want to have happen. And boom, it, it does. Uh, so that is an option. <laughs> yes. We'll see if you need to use it or not. But that is now an option. All right, cool. I will have that ready. Okay, so, uh, back over to the docs team. Team head empty. Um, 
So uh, Reggie has Flint. Are you just trying to get away from the docks? Are you like weaving between shipping containers? What is your plan? I guess here? he's trying to like waste this guy's time right now. So like kind of weaving between containers and like uh, trying to do like hit and run tactics of like running up to where people are trying to load stuff and like push crates into the to the water. Okay. He's um, not necessarily. I mean, he's being very direct with this right now. You knocked somebody into the harbor, like those Dalmatians did Cruella's mom off the cliff. Someone going to, to have me as her tragic backstory. That you is... you are really into spoilers. Those Dalmatian Cruella movie. <laughs> God, oh. That's a night. That's a night in the courtyard if I ever heard one. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, okay. So let's see. I think. If this is what you were doing, this is probably another provoke someone rather than directly engage a threat. But you can certainly try and provoke someone again. Um, see if you do better this time. Um. Yeah. Uh. So you know, one of my moves being uh, I've got a head that I don't need. Uh. So when I provoke someone with obvious threats and shows a force, I can roll danger instead of superior. Does that feel like that? Okay. Uh. Meets the conditions this time. Yeah. Because so now roll. I'm actually like breaking. Yeah. So you can go ahead and roll plus danger. That's a nine. Okay. Um. So on a seventy-nine, they can instead choose one. Um. So they either stumble, you take plus one sword against them, they err, you gain a critical opportunity, or they overreact, you gain influence over them. I'm going to say that uh, they overreact, so you will gain influence over them, but what happens in terms of them overreacting is, uh, you know, you have, this is not the first time you've dashed back to where they're trying to load up the yacht, and you've, you know, you've taken a crate or two and yeeted it out um, over the water, and as you are, uh, you know, doing that and recovering from that, you get just basically clotheslined and you are, you know, slammed to the ground as uh, Reggie in full wolf form has basically one hand around your throat and, you know, claws up above and he's just, or, you know, has claws for a second, he seems to think about that and then, you know, just takes, um, you know, uh, closes it into a fist but just starts punching you in the face. Um, so I would like you to mark a condition here, your choice. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and get angry. Okay. Not my boy. All right, so Sabrina, you see this. At this point, most of the uh, minions employees have taken shelter either onto the super yacht or have fled out into the docks. But you see Reggie is tackled your friend went to the ground and just punch him in the face. Uh, yeah. She's not pleased about that. Um, she's going to uh, fly down um, and I'm going, she's going to use her uh, telekinetic abilities to mm -hmm. uh, she's going to like fly between him and uh, Flint. So she's like kind of laying on top of Flint but like with her back to him. Um, and her cloak kind of falls back, and she's going to use her still kinetics to, like, flashbang um, uh, the bad guy, Reggie. Okay. I want to blind um, him for a second. Sure. This does sound like you are directly engaging a threat, however. Mm -hmm. So please roll plus danger. Okay. okay. Uh, all right, did we enter... Uh, enter Oof. battle. Yeah, um, I will say that certainly... Okay, so yeah, we should back up a bit. Uh, we're gonna kind of have two battles going on here, sort of, kinda, though there isn't, like, a clear villain for the other team yet, but so let's... My nemesis uh, is that plane. <laughs> yeah. Um, Just... okay, so... Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, if I enter... So, I have the captain move, so if I enter battle right. as a team and, uh, so, if I'm, I, I get plus forward. Okay, so, 
Hmm. All right. So this may break the team pool a little bit because when you end your battle against a dangerous foe as a team, and we kind of have two teams here, add two to the team pool. So who in team head empty is the leader? Is it Flint or is it Sabrina? That is a good question. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because I feel like it makes sense for Corvid to be the leader because she has the most experience, but it's kind of Flint's thing. So Sabrina would probably be cool with having Flint be the leader. Like, All right, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah being, being, being the leader of this engagement. Yeah. All right, so Flint is the leader. Does Flint have influence over every teammate? Does Flint have influence over Sabrina? I believe so. Everyone and add does. another team. All okay. right. Uh, Are we doing separate pools then? No, we'll we'll just break it because okay. y'all have had ridiculous team pool before, and you know I can always just say time passes and reset it. Um. Okay. So everyone has the same purpose in the fight. Add another team. Mm -hmm. Right? If, we have the same purpose, taking in your cousin? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. I shouldn't have if, uh, if any team member mistrusts the leader or, or the team, remove a team. I trust. Yay. All right. If your team is ill-prepared or off-balance, remove a team. I mean, I would say so. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> That yep. makes sense. So you can oh. either accept the removal of the team, or the leader can mark a condition to avoid removing the team from the pool. I mean, I th I think we're okay with. All right. So what does that put the team pool at? Four. Okay. And so when we eventually cut back over to Team Thoughts Go Zoom, that's gonna cause <laughs> even more team. Which yeah. I'm trying to think how narratively that would work. If like if somehow one team uses up all the team. And then the other team, you know, is in a situation guys. where it's like we try to use it, it's like, oh no, our our power of friendship is failing us. <laughs> anyway, I think it's just a it's a sub it's a consequence of splitting up. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how Mask handles us splitting the party, whether it's as disastrous as it usually is in D and D. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, you were going in. You were trying to flash, uh, Reggie. You were gonna flash bang Reggie. Y yes, um, Alex. Yes. My teenage uh, so. character is going to use bright lights to blind the bad guy. So please yeah. roll plus danger or whatever. <laughs> if you have something in place of this, but you are directly engaging the threat. Yeah. No. I. Um. I. The, the only thing I have is for uh, if I'm angry. Or if I'm captain, which I am not. So here we go. Sure. This is a hit plus a seven. Okay, so on a seven to nine, you get to pick one. You either resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. Ooh. Um. So I wanna, I wanna like blind him for a second. So that would maybe create an opportunity or surprise him. What What do you think is better? Um, probably surprised because he was not expecting uh, you to be there, certainly. Um, yeah. So uh, he is, so what I'll say is this, because you said you were like flying in, you positioned yourself kind of in between them, right? As much yes. as you can. Um, so you do get off the, the, the blinding light, and he's reeling from that, but you came in like, mid one of his punches so yeah. you also take a punch so please mark okay. the condition for that i'm gonna mark angry because don't come after my friend yeah but i will say uh he's certainly disoriented he has released his grip on flint for the moment um okay. okay so uh flint you are on the ground you're just I should be using your hero names. The Silver Wolf, you are on the ground. You have been punched in the head repeatedly. Corvid, you have just been punched probably in, you know, the shoulder or something, but it hurt a lot because it was werewolf strength. Um, you two are kind of on the ground together. Uh, you know, it's not quite full anime falling on top of each other, but there's also a blinded, uh, angry werewolf not too far away from you. What would you two like to do? Uh... 
I'm gonna do something where like you know so R Reggie's just like temporary blinded. So Clinton has the opportunity to just like kind of push him off and then roll with uh with to the side with Corbett so they can both pop up ready for the fight. Okay, that's easy enough to do. Uh, no need to roll for that. Cool. Um, I. I mean, the the intent here is to to try and try and subdue Reggie. Okay. Um. So, I don't know if they'll just be to directly engage a threat again. Uh, that to... is likely what the role would be. But you tell me how you envision that. Are you just gonna go in for a slug fest and try and wear him down? Or are you gonna try and use something in the environment to help you uh, restrain him? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, I can directly engage in a threat, uh, and use my ability in a china shop so I can cause significant collateral damage to the environment, aka his mega yacht. Uh, so I'm gonna try and like bull rush him and pick him up and like both of us like send us both through the wall of the ship. Okay. All right, so uh, please go ahead and roll plus danger. Ooh. So this will let you choose an additional option regardless of your result. Yep. Ooh, hey, look, another seven. Okay, but so because you are causing collateral damage, you get to pick two. So right. resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, press surprise or frighten the opposition. Uh, I would like to... I can pick two, because I got a seven in my ability. So resist their blows, and then also... Uh, try to impress, surprise, or frighten him. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. So, yeah, I think your idea of collateral damage, yeah, so because of how you have ended up with uh, Corvid, uh, you know, player three has entered the, the game here. Uh, you are in your position such that if you were to bull rush him, as you said, you would be heading towards the docks. But I think uh, you're angry, you are upset, you are confused, you're hurt by, you know, all this family drama that you are, is way over your head, but you know something's not right here. And so you put a lot more oomph into it than you were anticipating. And so, Corvid, from your perspective, you see the Silver Wolf kind of tense up, kind of going into, you play football, right, I think? Yeah, or he played football. Oh, he plays lots of sports. Uh, yeah. Rugby was the most recent one, though. Right, but kind of going into, like, like for a, an instant, the football, like, on the line, getting ready, but then it's just... Or you barely even see it as he just instantly tackles Reggie, and they both go flying across, and you think for a second they're going to go into the water, but there's more uh, power to it than that, and they slam into the super yacht and kind of crash through the first wall into one of the cabins there, and you, you know, can't quite see for a second. There's actually a couple of the, you know, mundane minions who flee out of the hole that has been caused, um, and uh, something in the um, in the wall that you broke starts sparking, and there's actually a small fire that starts up, and there's now some smoke rising up. So you have certainly caused significant collateral damage here. Um, I'm sure that's not going to be a problem, he says, knowing full well that'll be a problem. Yeah, but Silver Wolf is too busy the to worry about right that. The water's right there. We're fine. Yeah, certainly no issues with the water being on fire. Um, Anyway, uh... Don't worry, when the ship sinks, it'll go out. Yep. Let's see. I kind of think if we continue here, if we go back to the other team... Uh, we should probably go back to the other team in this moment. Um, so, Corvid, remind me, you will be the first to act when we return. So, team Thatsko Zoom. The plane is starting to taxi away. Uh, you see, it's, uh, you can kind of tell Hemlock more so because you are the one paying attention for it, that some of the engines are hitching ever so slightly, um, but unless either of you is, you know, an aeronautical engineer, you 
can't exactly tell what is or isn't going as it should. Um, but it starts taxiing away. Uh, do you follow along behind it, or are you staying in your in your spot, waiting to see what happens? Uh, can't let that thing get off the ground. And I'm going to try and pursue it without spotting. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I think that's about the sound that the engines of the plane are making. But I think in order to do this without being spotted, I did mention earlier how it is an airfield and it's fairly open. This is going to be an unleash your powers roll here. So please roll plus freak. All right, so on a 10, you do it. So I think you are able to figure out an angle of approach, and you actually notice, because um, this is certainly something I've seen in a lot of airports, is like, yes, there's a runway part, and then kind of, you know, areas of grass, and a lot of the time there's actually like a dip in between, like where the grass is and the next runway. And so you motion chrysalis over there, and you're able to kind of throw up a small, shield of grass to hide you as you go in and kind of run along after it in that uh depression so you are you are reasonably confident that you are able to follow along and you know anyone kind of trying to peek out the plane is most likely not seeing you at the moment and so it is still a plane that is building up speed and taxiing so it's getting away from you a little bit but you are you know you're no longer just way back at the start of the wrong way. So you are keeping up with it better than, you know, two teenagers running should be able to, given that you are making use of powers to do so. Yeah, uh, it's nothing else to grasp for a long time. Yeah, so... Fair call, like... Yeah, basically. Um, Chrysalis, it's a teeny tiny bit disconcerting seeing the way the Earth is moving in response to Hemlock, but you you know you shove that aside and you know continue in your pursuit of justice. Yes. Gosh. All right. Still taxing. Still. Yeah. Um. It has reached its uh. It what appears to be its uh, takeoff lane. You actually see like. Another plane is trying to taxi into position, but this jet decides to cut the line, and so you know comes very close to hitting the other plane, but the other plane manages to stop in time. It's that now it's now it's reckless piloting. I think we're I think we <laughs> we're clear to engage. <laughs> All right. I think this pilot might be drunk. Uh, he certainly did do <laughs> do a doozy on his brain. Uh, I'm going to try and pop one of the tires on the, okay. on the thing. Um, I'm trying to think if this is a direct engage threat or an unleash your powers. This is probably more so still an unleash your powers. Um, so please roll plus freak. Unless you have something else. Well, give us plus freak. All right, y'all were well, pretty well tonight. That is right? yeah, twelve. So yeah, you do it. So you reach out. Um, I think maybe perhaps one of your spikes instinctively grows, and you know you're so focused on the tire you don't notice this. Hemlock, you see like one of the spikes that Chrysalis grows when he's doing you know hero stuff, and it almost like grows and moves and points towards the uh, the tire, and. Uh, Kevin, in your mind, it basically is, you know, you're focusing, it's kind of like, what, what was that movie where they went to that made-up college and there's a guy who is just makes his major making things blow up with his mind? It's, oh, God. It, uh, it was a Justin Long... Yeah. yeah the accepted. movie is accepted, and it's amazing. Yeah. It's, yeah. I've never seen it. I'm going to watch it now. 
kind of silly, but there's a guy who just spends the whole movie trying to make stuff blow up with his mind and he's, you know, just staring super intently at That's it. That's what we're and... doing next week. That's what we'll do instead of this. We'll just watch that. Yep, but so, uh, Chrysalis, you, you do this and, you know, because this is the world of superheroes, it works and the tire pops and the plane starts listing um, and, you know, clearly things are going wrong. They're still trying to take off, though, because uh, they are, uh, you know, not having any of this. Um, but also the cargo bay starts lowering, and then you see those guys with the guns again. Uh, so they are peeking out. You know this is not how a plane is supposed to take off with the cargo tore down. But they they seem to be disregarding a lot of airplane safety rules uh, at this moment. Um, they don't open fire yet, but they are, you know, again, on alert, trying to watch what's going on. Um, and the plane, you know, it seemed like it was picking up some speed. Uh, you obviously caused a slight problem to it, but they are apparently determined to try and take off. You know, you're making it more and more unsafe for them to do so, but also more likely to uh, prevent them from doing so. All right. I guess then Hemlock's move is to uh, zoom in front of the plane um, and like harness the uh, vines that are already posted up the inside of it. Mm -hmm. um, reconnect those, basically like put a leash on it. Okay. And then try and yank it off to the side uh, because if it can't get into the uh, if it can't go down the runway, it definitely can't take off. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I will say before you do this, let's have your team enter into battle against the dangerous foe now that the gunmen have entered back into uh, things. So we add two team to the pool. Who is the leader in Team Thoughts Go Zoom at the moment? I think Chrysalis should be the leader. That's the responsible thing to do. I don't know. <laughs> but Chloe is the one that, like, announced a blood pack to take down this plane. Go for Chloe. Okay. All right. Does Chloe have influence over Kevin? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. So add another team to the pool. Exactly. Does everyone on the team have the same purpose in the fight? Take down the plane. Sure. Yep. Add another team. Does do either of you mistrust the other? Oh. Maybe you should. All, All right. on board. Yep. So no need to remove the team. There is your team ill prepared or off balance. Hundred percent. Yes. So you can <laughs> you can you know either take the team removal or well you can mark a condition and not remove the team. Oh, that's fine. Okay. That puts you all at eight? Seven? I'm trying to do the math without actually looking at the handout. Okay. We've got team spare and I'm already yeah, yeah. conditions. Yep. All right. So uh you you zoom ahead, you Try and reach out, out with your powers to accomplish this. I think this is going to be, um, you know what? We'll hmm. no. Th this is still an unleash your powers here. Hi. So please roll plus three. And I believe you get the plus one from your earlier thing. Did you factor that into that roll? Yep. Okay. So that's an eight. Kevin can only add one team to the pool. So mixed success. So uh, with unleash uh, your powers, you can either mark the condition or I'll tell you how the effect is unstable or temporary as you attempt to lasso the plane with your uh, preceded plants that you put in. I feel like the unstable or temporary uh, applies here. Okay, so you you zipped ahead, you reach out, and you know you can see. The pilots actually see you now because you position yourself in such a way and you know they try and steer around you at the same time as your plants suddenly reach out and you see one of the, one of the pilots you know, 
you imagine they're saying, holy shit, what the fuck? As there are suddenly plants shooting out of a plane. Uh, they attach to you, and for a second you think you're actually doing it. You're, you're being a hero, you're holding the plane, and then physics kick in as the plane continues to go and just starts dragging you <laughs> along. Um, so, Kevin, you see <laughs> Hemlock being dragged along kind of to the side of the plane now. She's not in a position where the gunman can get an angle on her, but she is also, you know, just... She has attached herself to a plane, which is attempting to pick up speed again. And I'll say, Hemlock, you're probably also, like, reaching out to those side plant areas to kind of root yourself down more, but... Again, physics is not on your side in this moment. All right. That's <laughs> what enough to do. Uh... All, right. All right. Pop the front tire. I don't know. Just take the splinter. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you probably pop like, the side tire that was closest to you before. I will say in order to get within a comfortable range to uh, get the front tire, you are going to have to leave the hiding spot. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, I might even just, like, just do the, like, telekinetic leap and spike bug, just spin, and just try and slash the tires. Okay, just Sonic the Hedgehog it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll say that this is going to be a directly engaged to the threat, because you are now suddenly... Jumping into the fray, you are now a target uh, here. But so please roll plus danger, or if you have something else for this, uh, for directly oh, engaging the threat. I am going to directly engage the threat. I might use not human enough. We'll see. Okay. That lets me add stuff. Yep. Oh. Okay, so. Before you choose not human enough, you, you all have so much team here that you can make use of to bump that up and mix success. At the very least. And then, you know, I guess do with it. not human enough, you can still do that if you want an additional option. Yeah. So, uh, so Chloe, how are you acting in this moment? You see Chrysalis leaping into action, going full song, the hedgehog, whirling spike ball. But it doesn't seem like he's quite going to hit his target. Um, I think that she just sees him heading for it. She's going to miss. Uh, so she gives like one sneak on the floor, uh, the way it works. Yep. Um, yeah, that's good. I was debating whether or not that would be you overexerting yourself, but that you have the team. That's fine. You're able to do it. So, uh, yes. So now that is up to a mixed success. And Chris, list it's now up to you if you want to choose not human enough to give yourself an additional option, or if you want to take the one for a mixed success. I think I'm just gonna take the one for yeah a mixed success. Okay. So uh, yeah. again, your choices: resist or avoid their blows. Take something from them. Create an opportunity for your allies. Impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. All right, I want to take something. I want to take this front landing gear, take All it right, right out. Higher thing. Yeah. Just, yeah. I still Melt. miss, but I hit the metal part, and I just cut that whole. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Tire you off. you did not get the tires. You got the strut, and now the tire apparatus. Yep. Yeah. And so that goes. Uh, Chloe, I'm gonna ask Hemlock. Where were you attached? Like, what part of the plane? Or is it you know? Uh. Well, her like. Uh, vines were gunching up tensions, so mm -hmm. she, I imagine she was like hanging off the side of it, like trying to pull on the wing okay. to get it to turn. Sure, yeah, just making sure that your point of attachment has not suddenly been severed. But you do have to, you know, probably call on your plants to move you out of the way as suddenly the tire has uh, gone flying. Yeah, gone, you know, zooming at, you know, in your general direction. The plane suddenly goes. <laughs> It is grinding along. Uh, you see one of the gun gunmen falls out of the plane and is... Uh, the other one seems to have managed uh, to hold on, but is now 
he is going to open fire towards both of you. Nothing hits yet, but that is now, there is now a live gun in play here. Um, Trail of bullets, like, shot past us. Yeah. Um, I think we'll give Hemlock one more thing to do before probably about break time. All right. Um, well, there's a live gun uh, in play here. Uh, an innocent could get hurt. I think that she's going to use those vines to swing up on the plane. Uh, and then she's going to activate her powers. Um, doing burns and flares here. So I'm going to roll that real quick. Okay. Uh, that is a 12. That's a full hit. Uh, I get a full three burn. Nice. I'm going to use one of those to snatch the gun out of his hand. Okay, using... Right, snatch. I was going to say, <laughs> using what? And then I looked at your sheet. <laughs> you have a player called Snatch. Yep, spend <laughs> one burn to use your powers to seize any one object up to the size of a person from someone within jumps up on top of the plane and, like, whips the gun out of his hand. Yeah, and so, Kevin, your perspective is skewed in, like, you're inside a washing machine because you're, you know, sonicking right now, but you do see Hemlock, you know, uh, you know, almost grappling hook up on top. It's kind of, like, using, you know, it's almost like reins on... Do they ever use reins for sandworms in Dune? Or am I just imagining that? But like two big vines kind of holding on, and then one just kind of re- just snakes out behind, grabs the gun out of the uh, gunman's hand, and just tosses it aside. That guy, uh, you know, yelps and <laughs> ducks back inside. Um, so the plane does appear to be slowing down as it is now, you know, grinding. Um, you can tell that the pilots have abandoned the cockpit because that it is now, you know, much closer to the ground than it's supposed to be. Um, and so uh, it doesn't seem like they bothered to turn off the engines, but it is now just kind of like plowing itself into the ground. And, uh, you know, it's no longer gaining speed. Whether or not it's losing speed is another question. And these are some, uh, some pretty bad pilots. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're bad guys, Tyler. Yep, they are probably gonna have their uh, FAA licenses revoked or something. I don't, I don't know exactly what it takes to Wait be a, a pilot. These, these pilots weren't licensed at all. <laughs> yeah, uh, but th- I think that is a good place for us to take our break and get ourselves some more refreshments for our audience. Get ourselves some more refreshments, and then we will come back. We will return to team. Head empty and see what's going on with the uh, the yacht party. So uh, get yourself some water, get yourself some snacks, take your meds, do some stretching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We'll be back very soon. Don't go anywhere. Hello, internet, and welcome back. We are certainly refreshed over here. I hope you are too. Uh, if you're watching this after the fact, you know, you can pause and we'll wait for you. And unpause. Okay, let's get back to it. So, Team Thoughts Go Zoom at the airport has mostly disabled the airplane. Um, seems things are mostly handled over there. Not entirely, but mostly. Uh, meanwhile, back at the docks, uh, Corvid, you had just seen the Silver Wolf you know, explode into action and knock his cousin Reggie into the yacht, which is now maybe on fire a little bit. But you are still flying around outside. Most of the other people have fled or are you know, cowering behind cover. Uh, you do see a couple people on the yacht fleeing from this newly created hole in the wall and uh, trying to make their way off the yacht. Fair. Uh, so are they are like when you said they went into it, I thought you meant the side. Um, so they I busted a hole into like yeah. an interior portion of the yacht. Yeah. So Corvid's gonna fly in there, uh, and then sort of land and look around. Uh, are they like physically fighting? 
so what you see and uh, Flint, what you are experiencing is like you have um, minor spoilers for Resident Evil Village. Uh, it's kind of like when Lady Dimitres just shoves you down through several floors. Um, you you have done that to Reggie, um, but he is you know also a werewolf and is made a pretty stern stuff and he is now recovered from being temporarily blinded and so you have knocked him through what you imagine is about half of the super yacht um but he is now uh cognizant again and is you know has grips on your arms and is you know stopping you from hitting him you know you no longer have a secure hold on him but he is also engaged in such a way that you know you're basically on equal footing and Corville will say you're you know you're flying through a surprising number of walls when you come upon this scene. Other question: Can I tell the difference between them? Yes, because okay. uh, Reggie was in, you know, a business suit of some kind, and so you know that's mostly torn to shreds yeah, the, now. The pants are just holding on. They always have stretchy pants. All right, uh, yeah. Corvid uh, is going to. Uh, go in. I was I was thinking about this, and then I was like, I should probably figure out what move I want to do. Uh, but I'm gonna go in and uh try and uh I'm gonna try and grab Reggie and uh like fly him out of there without getting hit by either. You know, like get behind him, like sort of put him in a headlock and start to pull him away if I can. Yeah. I do think this is going to be a directly engaged threat. Yeah. So please roll plus danger. Okie dokie. Uh, are you communicating at all to the silver wolf or are you just uh, going yes. in? I'm going to look at him and I guess say do we have a plan? Uh, does he seem to be, like, aware? Or is he yeah. just, like, I'm, Well, I mean, he's a werewolf. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm aware I'm a wolf. But, no, he, I mean, aside from the conditions he's marked, it's not like he's, you know, full beast mode, rage mode, yeah, unless okay. you think he is, Tyler. No, he's, he's normal. He's just angry. Yeah. Okay, right. so that is an 11 on your danger roll what's up danger uh so what's you get to pick two uh resist or avoid their blows take something from them create an opportunity for your allies compress surprise or frighten the off so. um i oh uh ooh, okay um i am going to uh take something from them that is their footing i'm going to take them off the ground uh, and the other thing is I want to scare them. Okay. I want to frighten them. Okay. Sorry, my computer is vibrating a lot. Um, so as I, as I do this, I, I, like, kind of wrap my, uh, hand around their throat. Uh, I imagine that they sort of go to reach for me, and I just grab their other hand, and with my strength, I'm able to, like, kind of pull it and hold it in. Um, which is like, I'm a very small girl. <laughs> I guess Corvid is like, I think she made her like 6'11", like she's tall, but she is just like a thin thing. So uh, I think that might be like a little scary, like this flying, strong person who's just got you and there's like the silver wolf in front of him. And We'll say he did not pick resist or avoid their blow, so Correct. he does get like a claw yeah. and it basically digs mm. into your neck and like... Yeah. If you had human physiology, it would probably, you know, be an artery that he yeah, yeah. severed there. So Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, it just doesn't bleed at all. And yeah, he like, but, uh, doesn't smell the blood, and he's like, what the fuck are you? Yeah, but please mark a condition for taking that blow. Um, I will feel insecure. Yeah, this, okay. this is... Like, Oh no, my alien physiology. <laughs> yes, that and also, like, I just saw them, like, bust through a bunch of walls, and I'm like, oh shit, I'm not that strong. <laughs> yeah, or actually, you know, no, we'll, we'll stick with that. I know, I'm still figuring out when I 
want to have y'all roll to take a powerful blow because that can have some consequences. Um, so, uh, so you kind of have him in a headlock. He is still, you know, he got that one, you know, uh, yeah. claw at you, but he is, you know, still kind of scrabbling. You're definitely getting scratches, but you kind of have him where yeah. you want him right now. Right. Uh, Silver Wolf, you see your friend Corvid has flown in, kind of has Reggie for the moment, uh, apprehended, but given what you know of your family as werewolves, as things stand right now, this is not a uh, a final um, this is not going to end it. And also, let's see, I need to make use of, because he's a villain, he gets to do villain things. I need to remember to do that as well. Um, I don't want that to full screen. So he is going to take uh, he's going to take the angry condition, um, and he is going to, uh, he's going to lash out at any vulnerability, and so he is going to, uh, say to you, Flint, <clears throat> so is this who you are, Flint? You need a girl to fight your battles for you? Can't fight me like a man? Thought you were a Silverhound. Just a sad little runt. That's what you are. Um, okay, so, first of all, sexist. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Maybe yeah, you don't know your I mean, cousin as well as you thought. Maybe I don't. Maybe but, I know exactly who he is. Anyway, go on. But, uh, he is using his influence over you to tell you who you are, how the world works. You can either accept it or attempt to reject it. Uh, probably attempt to reject it, I suppose. Yes. So, oh gosh, where is that? Where is that? Is, is something on your sheet for attempt to reject influence? Yes, I, so there yeah. is the, underneath the labels, reject influence. So you click that, and that should just do a thing. It should do a roll, and depending um, on the result. I don't think I have any bonuses to this. Yeah, I think it's just the flat 2d6. Okay, so that's a 9. Now I need to find where the rules are for rejecting influence. Um... um a ten, for... a ten's a full hit, right? And I've got a friend here with some team in the pool. We can. Yeah. I think we should go for the the. Well, I mean, I don't know what what the the consequences of this are. Uh, uh, Clear a condition or mark potential by immediately acting to prove them wrong. Shift one label up and one label down your choice, or cancel their influence and take plus one forward against them. All right, cool. Um, so we with uh with Corvid helping uh, and taking one out of the team, we can take a ten and choose two. Um, and I think. Uh, well, first, I want to cancel their influence and take one forward against them, mm -hmm. um, and then try to, or yeah, I'll just so that'll give you a plus one on your next roll against him, yeah, which will be good because I'm I think I know what I'm going to try and do, 
um, but also, yeah, clear a condition. That's yep, makes sense. Okay. So clear my angry, um, um, because at this point I'm going to try and uh, reason with him. Well, not reason with him, but pretty much. Uh, we're bringing you in, Reggie. You're going to pay for what you've done. Um, which I don't know what that would necessarily be. Pierce the mask, maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could certainly pierce the mask here, and that could help you in talking him down. So roll plus mundane, and you have your plus one. It's good, because I have a minus one to mundane, which is still bad, because I'm pretty bad at rolling d6s, apparently. Yeah, well, you do have a friend here who can... I do have a friend. A, a mixed success. Yep. Bump a mixed success. success. So, um, how, does how does Corvid, Corvid help, help send, send this send message, message home? home? Corvid, Corvid. Uh, she's, uh, she's... Sorry, I have to manually unmute myself because if mm -hmm. I hit my mute buttons, then it mutes the stream. Um, yeah. What did you say again to him that we're taking him in? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm helping. Am I helping? Flint, or should I? Am I saying something to enforce what we're already? Whatever, Whatever you, think you think will help, help Flint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Move here. Um, here. <laughs> uh, then I'm gonna do this. Uh, Corvid, uh, like the you can see the hand that she's holding uh, uh, Reggie with shifts a little bit, and it like bulks up, and you see Corvid's form change from a. Uh, <laughs> From that 11, uh, 611, uh, like, slender figure to, like, a hulking, like, six foot, or uh, not, I'm just five eleven, uh, like, to a six foot four, like, bulking, shouldered, like, dude with, she's still got the mask, uh, he's still got the mask on, the eyes are glowing, uh, the hair has, is, instead of the long green, it's short green, uh, and sort of, like, uh, spiky, and, uh, she, like, he readjusts himself and he's like, If you prefer, I can do whatever you want. But you're going in. <laughs> Certainly it throws him for a loop, loop as, as that, transformation that transformation takes, takes place. place. Uh, uh, so, so, yes, yes now, now day 79, you, you get to ask one of one the following. following. What, do you, what do you intend to do? do? What, are what are you really planning? planning? How, could How could I get, get your character, character to blank? blank? What do you, what do you want, want me, me to do? do? How could I gain influence over you? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so either, either trying to figure out what, figure out what he's planning, planning or, or <laughs> how can how I can get, I get you, you to give up? <laughs> okay. Um, I'll say you basically, you basically know, know the former already. already. He's, he's trying, trying to, to flee town. town. Yeah. 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 So, so how, can how can I get you, get you to give, give up? up? Um, he, well, he, he understands, understands sort of that this that is how things, how things work, work in the Silverhound family if he messed up, so he has to leave now. You imagine perhaps you could try and turn him against your grandpa. Uh, you know, yeah. get him to maybe become a snitch. I think that's the, the, the direction I'm trying to, trying to go with this, is like, you know, grandpa's making you leave town, but you don't have to. You can turn on him type of thing. You can help us and we can help you. Um, so you say as much unless you want to role play that out. But sorry, yeah, just <laughs> uh, hard to to fully role play today. Sure, no, that's fine. So he hears you say that, and he's you know he's still struggling against you, Corvid, but it is not nearly as much as before. He's you know it's almost just like a certainly not clawing you anymore, um, and so not going fully limp yet because he it's not in his nature but he's like you really think paladins can take out cornelius uh man what i'm trying to think of a cool thing to say here that's uh essentially you know Sorry. 
with your help, we can definitely take him down. He's... You don't know that he fully believes you. But I don't he's... think Flint fully believes himself. Yeah, but he's certainly realizing that this is only going to get worse if he continues to struggle. And so he, you know, finally, uh, you know, stops struggling. He'll shift back into, you know, human mode. And so now, Corvid, you have a, you know, 30-something shirtless dude wrapped up in your arms. I didn't do anything. I hit the button. Yeah. Um. Hopefully it's fine. Sorry. Yeah. I. I. I fixed it. Yeah. But uh. So he's looking around and finally realizing the damage. Sees like that there's fire back in like one of the first rooms we broke through. And he's like, "Shit, we got to get everyone off." But, yeah, they work for the family, but they still don't deserve to burn to death. Obviously, Lint. Can we trust him? Reggie, can we trust you? For now? I just want to... These people don't deserve to die. Let's get them off the boat. I definitely don't think I can trust him, but I gotta do the hero thing and help people off the boat, so... Yeah. Okay. I, I <laughs> wish there was, like, an insight check something uh -huh. here. Um, well, I guess it, we could pierce the mask pierce again. The mask, technically. Give it a shot. Let's go. And I'll say you both can um just think or we'll let flint do it first see what that result is so That's six you can wait do i still have my no i don't have my plus one against no because it was a forward so that yeah so you can either flint, take... flint definitely trusts him <laughs> okay so you get the mark experience uh corvid you can <laughs> attempt to pierce the mask if you want what do i want to Hey now. Uh, here's the net. I, I got a minus two to this, so let's see. <laughs> oh my god, we're Seems both so bad at this. <laughs> Seems trustworthy. All right, so team, yeah, team no empty. thoughts. Team yep. no thoughts. So you both get to mark potential, and you know, we'll say that you start moving out. He's you kind of keep him between you two because. You're like, okay, he's gonna help, but you're not fully just like, oh yeah, you know, he's good now. Um, mm -hmm. We did it. We saved the we day, and he's good. Him. Yeah. Um, we'll say that you, you know, you signal the paladins to come assist with cleanup, and we'll cut back over to Team Fatsko Zoom in this moment. Um, so the uh, the plane is gr is grinding along, certainly no longer taking off, but it does seem like it's just kind of along the, the runway. Um, you know, you can see there are other planes that were starting to get into position. They are clearly backing off. You see some, like, emergency services vehicles heading this way, but it does seem like the plane is starting to veer back towards, you know, the main public terminal. Um, what do you two do? Uh, 
without consulting Chrysalis, Hemlock is going to hop into the plane and pass through via life absorption. Okay. Um, um going to use the rest of her burn uh yeah, the rest of her flares on overcharge. Uh you spend two burn and take a ten plus when you unleash your powers. Okay, so we don't even need to roll, so uh you use your light absorption power. What does that look like in this moment? Um, like so like the the back of the plane. Um she just bumps down onto that. Uh and like we just see her silhouetted with like her uh green lens glasses. Uh the only part of her face that you can see they're flashing glowing green color. Uh and as she starts to walk into the plane, all of the vines that are already in her plane begin to grow out. And like you know, like <laughs> there's like the pilots up front that are probably already freaking out and then like these vines start like crawling up and like uh grabbing onto their limbs. Um, whoever is left in there, um, there's at least one guy that had a gun and no longer does. There's another guy who does have a gun. Um, so the guy with the gun, like, lifts it up and, like, a vine just, like, pull, like, comes out and grabs that hand and yanks him to the wall. Um, it's, it's just creepy, man. So with the life absorption, are you putting them to sleep? What is it you're doing? Are you, like... Does it look like you are withering them away and that is incapacitating them? How how brutal is this? Um she's absorbing enough life to make them pass out, uh, and go than that. So it's more like they all suddenly just gave a lot of blood and are not taking it well. Essentially, yeah. They they all need they're all gonna need some juice in a cookie after this. Okay, so um Chrysalis, you see Hemlock drop down from above, go into the plane. You're not sure what happens, but a short while later, she pops back out and says, you know, crew's taken care of, but the <laughs> plane is still moving. So what is your uh, next step here, Chrysalis? All right. I don't want to necessarily mess up these engines. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to try and bust through the front of the plane. And with telepathy, see if I can dig into a pilot, one of the pilot's minds and see if I can just see how to turn this flipping plane off. Okay. Um, so you'll get in there and you find that there's a lot more vegetation inside the plane than you think there should be. There are vines around each of the crew members, and they all seem to be asleep and looking rather pale. Um, but I'll say that you can attempt to unleash your powers to try and read the mind here. Um, all right. ECL idle condition of her cutoff feather. Joe Mercy Shell of Lever Pool. I give it a cool book. No, 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 no. That's that's what I'm trying to intimidate people. Okay. Honestly, it creeps me out a little. There was a fuel in an emergency shutoff lever. Battery switch off. Standby bus off. Emergency power shut off. Off. Egress. Okay. Egress. Egress. That is basically what you pick up, <laughs> Chrysalis, and you start looking around and like. You get, it's not so much, like, you don't get those words in that sequence, but you get, like, flashes of, like, this is this button that you need to press, and this button, and this button, and so on and so forth. Uh, but it's also, you know, you get, like, just the button, and so you still have to search around the cockpit to find where they actually are, and the plane's getting closer and closer, and the, and, like, you can see their, like, sirens from vehicles outside as they are trying to converge on this, but they also don't have anything to stop a plane that is, you know, making its way towards the, towards the terminal. But thankfully, you are able to hit the last button in time that the engines kind of die down, and it just actually grinds to a halt and, you know, just barely boops the, like, the jet bridge that it was heading towards. 
Remember, when you egress the plane, don't lie down in case emergency vehicles can't see you. Because they will run you over. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we stopped this plane and definitely did shut down an entire airport for the foreseeable future. <laughs> to be fair, like... The airports usually do keep on working after a, an incident, so, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, if there's more than one runway, why not? Yep, I yeah, know. We just destroyed one. Yeah, I do. Uh, well, we are in a better position to see this. It is like the tarmac just torn up behind. Um, this runway is going to not be usable for a fair amount of time. Or, you know, maybe they'll just call cement offs in, or the equivalent in this world. The plane's not moving. Yes. Everyone inside is incapacitated. Yep. The authorities are here. Mm -hmm. Let's get the fuck out. <laughs> How furtively are you trying to make your exit here? And How, How furtively? I mean, are you trying to... Leave without being identified as hemlock and chrysalis. I I don't think I'm going to. It's one of those. I continue to not understand how no one has figured out that Kevin is chrysalis in character. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, no, there's no, there's no getting out of it. I'm just going to start walking out the back. And are you I'll have in... my, my squire thing on. Hemlock okay. backs into uh, some foliage um, and tries to Batman his way out of here. But, you know, it's free. Yes, you know, all the trees that are right by the, uh, <laughs> the terminals at airports. Um, okay, let's see. Or, you know, just the grass. Just, like, do that thing where she takes a few steps back and then just, fall, like, trust fall directly into the grass. And then there's, like, Okay. Um, Big bound of grass shoots yeah. away. <laughs> yep. Like, it, it's like wind just, like, running through the grass. This is definitely going to be a roll. Uh, this is probably going to be an Unleash Your Powers roll. And then, Kevin, you should start thinking about how you feel about Chloe abandoning you to, you know, take responsibility for this on your own. But that's something we'll get to in a little bit. Okay, so unleash your powers, uh, nine. So either mark a condition or I'll tell you how it's unstable or temporary. I'll mark a condition. I feel like guilty <laughs> applies in this situation. Probably. <laughs> okay. So, Kevin, you are, you know, moving out of the plane. Uh, you're in, you know, you find, you've transformed into Chrysalis and are, you know, you know you, you've handled em some emergency situations before. You haven't ever really been alone for it. Uh, so that's a bit new, but you start, you know, the emergency service workers get there and, you know, they start trying to see what's going on and see, oh, there's a squire and, you know, there's a part of them that you recognize. It's like, okay, that's what happened. And then they go into like, okay, well, damage control. And so, you know, paramedics start moving in and investigating the uh, disabled crew members. Um, I guess a question for you, Danae. How long does the vegetation stick around if you have am sprayed? Well, I want to say... Like, since it is literally her transforming her own body, um, and, and this is awfully, uh, for me, I recognize, um, mm -hmm. I, I want to say that, like, the farther she gets away from them, the more the vines, like, wither and kind of fall away. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's, it's not like there's no evidence of the vines, there's dried up, like, vines, uh, everywhere, but, um, yeah, it, it dies. Part. And Hemlock is certainly a new enough hero that that's not going to be an instantly recognizable sign, but Kevin, you, you look around and you see that 
you know, the plane is no longer bursting with vegetation and there's you know, maybe a couple dried up leaves here and there. But aside from that, it looks like something may have, you know, burst out of the plane, but it's entirely unclear what. And so you are left to try and explain what happened as uh, there is also, you see, uh, arriving on the scene, uh, you recognize a couple of the knights who were presumably summoned when it's like, oh no, there's a plane out of control. Um, now they show up. I mean, they had to get to the airport. Um, so they got there remarkably quickly because this has only been, you know, really a few minutes since it started taxiing. Um, and so, but anyway, um, I guess also like to salt my notes to get a um, a suitable knight. Uh, you see a couple show up who one of whom you recognize actually from the assembly way, you know, long ago when you first met the Masketeer and you were fighting the Rat Scallion. Uh, you see Legacy, who has, you know, just a big giant uh, broadsword. You also see a hero who to our, you know, 2021 real world viewers, it's dressed more or less like um, Daredevil from season one of the Netflix show, but also has like the mouth covered up. You know him to be a hero uh, going by Cambio. And so they both show up and they, you know, start directing emergency workers more. Uh, and once things seem to be handled in that respect, they come towards you, Kevin, and say, uh, you hear Legacy say, well, this is certainly a mess. Yeah. This, oh, well, uh, and Cambio says, you're lucky that that warrant just came through. That's gonna oh. save a lot of headache. But there's gonna be a long discussion for you and kind of looks around and doesn't see anyone else from your team. Uh, well, that's going to make this an even longer discussion back at HQ. Oh. Where's your team? Is this you operating solo? The team, the targets we were pursuing split up and we had to pursue multiple uh, avenues of escape for them. And I came here. Well, there's going to be a long debriefing for you and the rest of your squad once, once we check in with them. Speaking of, and you know, they kind of check their communication devices, uh, and you also kind of, you know, now that you have a moment, you can check yours as well. And there's, uh, I turn it back on, <laughs> <laughs> and then put them on mute. <laughs> yeah. I wish there was like a stealth roll or sleight of hand to see if they notice you doing that. Um, but we'll just let that slide for now. Um, and so we'll go back over to Team Head Empty uh, as you are working with Reggie to evacuate the super yacht. Um, Boy, there's got to be so many people on that super yacht. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's a large boat and you know there were already people there and then they brought more people to you know from the penthouse and so uh similarly with you all uh there's some knights who have shown up because some bystanders elsewhere at the dock saw motion called it in um and so showing up with you all there is um again some of the uh heroes that you recognize from well Sabrina, you would recognize them. Flint, you weren't at school yet from that assembly. There is Eve and Vega who show up. Uh, Eve being the basically Sailor Scout superheroine, and uh, Vega, you know, to be another alien um, who looks basically like a. Uh, what, what does she look like again? But is, you know, sort of like a a black hole and a mm -hmm. star superimposed on each other, uh, yeah. but in humanoid form. Um, and so they show up and see that, uh, you know, 
you have been using some of your heliokinesis to try and control the fire. Vega shows up, seems to have a similar power set, and between the two of you gets the fire on the super yacht under control, mm -hmm. and she will turn to you and say, so it seems like you two have had a hell of a day, huh? We just happen to be in the right place at the right time. What are you oh, right. We were definitely in the right place at the right time. Yes, that is a good line to have for the press, but uh, I mean, you and me, there's going to be hell to pay back at HQ once we get you all back in. This uh, got them way out of control. Yeah. And uh, you see uh, elsewhere on the docks, Eve has taken Reggie into custody and has kind of, you know, touched his head and you see him kind of get a blank look on his face and mm -hmm. he seems much more um, amenable. You know, it's and not fair to say that. that we can say amenable here. Right. Um, and is much more uh, willing to go along and, you know, gets into one of the many, you know, Paladin's vehicles that has shown up and seems to be heading back towards HQ. Ready? I guess so. As ready as I'll ever be. Okay. Uh, Sorry things got really out of control there. That's okay. It's, you know, what we had to do. We couldn't let him get away. Yeah. Yeah, right. No, we couldn't let that happen. Get, get on the ship. Uh, so, like, she or he like is walking around and kind of like ducks. He's like, "Oh," <laughs> turns back into Corvid and then like turns back into Sabrina. So like goes from six three to five eleven to like five four. <laughs> Sorry, I just you know feel more comfortable like this. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, okay? it worked out great. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was intimidating, and it was a little sexist of him, because I don't really have a gender, but, you know. Yeah, that... I don't know. Are you okay? If... Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. You know what he said about you being, like, a pup and stuff? You yeah. Know that's, not, that's not true, right? You're, like, one of the strongest people I know. You mean that? Of course I do. Did you see the hole you put in that ship? Yeah, that was kind of an accident. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, even with all the stuff going on with your family, I mean, I, I know that it's probably really difficult for you, and you seem to be handling it really well, that's all. Thanks, Sabrina. That means a lot to me. Yeah, of course. I just don't want you to get in your head about this. Sometimes family can suck, but they're there for you. I mean, like, I'm here for you. you know that. Yeah, it turns out family can suck, but, you know, I've got other types of family. Yeah, like friends. You're a really good friend to me, Sabrina. I'm glad you came to our school. Me I'll too. Feel like you are comforting and supporting someone, Sabrina. So please roll plus mundane to see if we get any mechanical benefits from this tender oh scene. God. Oh boy, um, not gonna be great. The two lowest mundane oh. people. <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> that's impressive. <laughs> so. I rolled it. Well, I rolled. I got a zero. I got how a do you zero. Have, wait, how do you have a negative three now? I thought you only had a negative three. Because I am, uh, I am angry. Oh, lol. Well. I should have <laughs> minus. Yeah, didn't you get rid of that? Like, we, we ended that scene, didn't we? No, but I'm still angry. But she took angry, angry when she got oh, punched yeah. in, in the fight here. Uh -huh. All right. I, got, yeah, so, I got rid of angry. Yeah, reminder uh... of conditions. Yeah, so he had a move to let him clear that. What uh, Kevin did will clear in whichever one it was. I think insecure. Now that that scene is over, um, but you have to take specific action to clear a condition unless you have something like 
comfort or support someone or something else that allows you to clear a condition instead. Gotcha. Um, and as a reminder, the way to clear conditions, to clear angry, hurt someone or break something important. Clear afraid, run from something difficult. To clear guilty, make a sacrifice to absolve your guilt. To clear hopeless, fling yourself into easy relief. And to clear insecure, take foolhardy action without talking to your team. I have an idea. <laughs> oh no, what? Um, <laughs> Go on. I don't know if this will work. But when we get back, I don't know how much this will hurt Chloe. Uh oh. But. Go on. Having a touching scene, having a touching moment. Corvid, as they land, uh, and Sabrina, or uh, Chloe is, uh, and Kevin are, are pulling up. Sabrina decides oh. it's a good time. We should figure out where Chloe is because she okay. ran away. I, okay. Well, we, fled the scene. Are you? What are you doing? Well, you certainly get up. some communication. I mean, she one hundred percent fled the scene, but she did also one hundred percent expect Chris to be right behind. Um, so you see I, that he is not when you finally stop running. Th there's a couple of things to talk about. Uh, having ended the scene uh, previous, um, I was tracking uh, condition clearing action. Um, yep. We had two conditions going into that fight. Uh, it was angry and insecure. Mm -hmm. um, she did break something important, which is, say, an airplane. Yeah. And uh, she did take foolhardy action without talking to her uh, by... Yeah, yeah using Fine. potentially uh, excessive force. So uh, would you say that those two would clear? Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clear those. And I'm also gonna say I'm also gonna argue for advancing the Doom Track because um, she used her powers a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and specifically her overcharge. Yep. So yeah, that fills up your Doom Track. So you will uh, get another Doom sign. Uh, I'm gonna take Portal. Okay. Because that's the one. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so that's all the mechanical crunchy stuff. Yes. Uh, back into the story. Um, Chloe, like, uh, pops out of some grass, uh, and as she does so, I think that she, like, drops her costume, uh, and, like, she turns around to look for Chrysalis. Like, that was a close one. Uh, and, like, Chrysalis? Kevin? Uh, and she, like, gets out her phone and starts, like, tap typing super quick to him. Before uh, you even start, you see a bunch of messages and requests from Paladin's HQ, like, report, status report, where are you? Check in. <laughs> um, and that might be a good time for her to see whatever needs to be seen uh, regarding Flint and Corvid. So you do decide to go back to HQ? Uh. I will say one thing as you are making your way back, you know, you're you're obviously thinking about lots of stuff, or I would presume that you are thinking about lots of stuff. There's one thought that seems to keep popping into your mind that you're not 100% sure where it comes from, but it seems like a small part of you is saying, that was a lot of fun. Hmm. And, you know, you, it just seems like it's maybe part of the others, and you feel... I mean, you presumably feel guilty about it, but you also kind of recognize some small truth in it. But that's maybe something to think about later as you arrive back and take it away, LB. So Corvid and uh, 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 Sabrina and Flint are having this nice conversation. Uh, she is kind of like reading things, and she's like, so like you you and Chloe aren't like like you're not a couple, right? Uh I mean we're a couple of friends. <laughs> <laughs> I just um well I just I 
I just wanted to tell you that I kind of like like you like you like more than a friend uh awesome <laughs> yeah I like you too like like me like me yeah really yeah can i kiss you is that okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay she like just giggles and then like floats up and kisses him <laughs> right as chloe walks by mm -hmm. Chloe, you come back into the changing room to see two of your teammates, two of your very good friends, Sabrina and Flint, locking lips, swapping saliva, whatever it is you want to call it's, it. It's not like the, it, <laughs> it's not gross high school uh, kids who've been dating for a while and are trying to make a statement in the middle yeah. of the hallway yeah. kissing. It's, you know, I get to kiss you for the first time, smooch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like Just a little the, bit of lingering. Yep. Sweet, shy, pack. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that, I think that Chloe walks in, uh, and her head is down, uh, looking at her phone, like, you know, trying to figure out, like, how to respond to all of these, uh, messages. Uh, and she just sort of looks up and sees that happening. Um, and she, like, looks for, like, too long. Like, because she's trying to, like, process what she's looking at. Um, and then, like, probably, um, it's probably enough time for someone to notice uh, before she, like, decides, like, okay, it's time to make a noise. <laughs> um, so she, like, um, sort of, like, looks down at her phone again and says, hey, guys. Oh, like Corbin, like looks to the other side of the like very quickly, like her hair blowing. Hey, so how did the doc go? Flint, Flint's probably probably like still pretty beat up, right? Because he did get his shit rocked a bit by Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, and as the bull, do you have any kind of advanced healing, or what? What makes you supernaturally tough? That is a good question. How much of the werewolf lore are we going by? Yeah. Yeah, we can do, like, full-on werewolf lore where they just heal really quickly. and Yeah, so I think... We'll like, there's maybe... just dry blood, I guess. Yeah, and, you know, maybe a little beat up, which is concerning, given your normal healing stuff, but because, of, you know, werewolf on werewolf violence kind of negates some of the healing factor there. Um, what, 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 sorry, this is totally uh, a, a tangent, but mm -hmm. it's like how in D and D, werewolves can't actually hurt each other unless you homebrew it, yeah. or they can. <laughs> like rule, rule this, uh, um, werewolves are in the last game. That's the game. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I I do like the idea that like werewolf on werewolf violence is. Uh, it does a lot more damage to them that they can't really heal out of right away. And uh, just to get a sense of things, Kevin, where are you in all this? Were you also just like in in the corner watching the kiss and not saying anything? Or <laughs> do you think I, I maybe think, you're arriving a little later coming back from the airport? I think I'm arriving like now as the I've missed everything and there's just awkwardness. Mm -hmm. Missed all the the juicy bits, and now yeah. like Flint is standing there scratching the back of his head, like, "Oh, hey, Chloe." So, so like here here's the scene. Uh, Chloe's like, "Hey guys, how did the docs go?" Like they separate. Uh, there's like a <laughs> moment of like awkward, and then like Flint's like, "Hey, Chloe," and then <laughs> Kevin walks in, and then Chloe stands up and goes, "Kevin, oh my god." And she, like, uh -huh. runs up to him. I'm so sorry. I thought you were right behind me. No. I can't do the grass thing, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I was caught up 
in the moment, and, like, I just, I thought it was best if, like, we left it, and then, like, came back later, and then worked it out later, and I just, ugh. This is I a get whole, it. This is a whole mess. And she, like, looks down at her phone again. I just imagine oh. there's still, like, messages popping up on it. Don't worry, we're all in a lot of trouble. I already got an earful on the way over. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we... fine. We're probably in a lot of trouble. It's, it's, I mean, it's one of those better ask forgiveness than permission scenarios, right? I mean, like, we got Reggie, so. Yeah, we did. And, and no Yay. bystanders were hurt, and only private property. Oh, really? No bystanders yeah, and, were hurt? I think and so. And we did wreck an airport, but. Oh my the gosh, airplane. why? <laughs> just the airplane. Just the airplane. Well, it, and, I, it did tear up that whole runway, and it almost crashed into the airport, but we they stopped it. stopping. Like, there was clearly stuff wrong with that airplane, and... I mean, yeah. Yeah, right? Like, if they don't figure out that we made the things wrong with the airplane, then I think we have a good justification for all of our actions after that point. I'm oh, sorry, what was that about you making things wrong with the airplane? As you turn and see Athenis, the leader mm -hmm. of the local chapter, has poked her head in. Alright, well you came in you came in at a weird spot. Um I wasn't actually suggesting we do that. It was more just to like I was about to say, but I'm pretty sure they're gonna figure it out. So but yeah, anyways. We tried to we tried to stall the airplane, we tried to we tried to like make it so it couldn't take off and then they tried to take off anyways it was super dangerous so that's how that whole scenario happened she you know bridge of her nose deep sigh okay. we got attacked first holds up a hand we will get to your debriefing later wanted to check in make sure you all were unharmed but we are going to have a long conversation about your responsibilities as squires. But you did also bring us the culprit in that werewolf attack video, and it sounds like he has a lot of interesting things to tell us, kind of looking at Flint. Um, so, this is a messy situation. But that's what hero business is. It's messy. Yeah, we try and sell it to the public that it is, you know, we're all knights in shining armor and here to protect everyone. Things get messy. And we're going to talk about how you can make it less messy in the future. But. Well, it's probably a bit premature to say good job because we, like I said, got to debrief everything. I'll talk to you all later, but um, as, as she is leaving, she is using her influence over you to tell you kind of that hero work is messy. And so if you choose to accept that, uh, I will adjust your labels. If you choose, if you decide you don't think that hero work is messy, then you can attempt to reject it, and we will see what comes of that. So let's go one by one. Uh, Sabrina, are you accepting what she said about hero work being messy? I accept. Okay. <laughs> so your um, your mundane is going to go up one, and your superior is going to go down one. Oh. Um, who's next on my Zoom call? Kevin, do you accept that hero work is messy? 100%, yes. Okay. Your mundane is going to go up, and your superior is going to go down one. So your minus one and minus two are swapping. Uh, let's see. Chloe, do you accept that hero work is messy? Yeah, I think so. That okay. makes a lot of sense. Yep. So your mundane is going up and your superior is going down. <laughs> Another <laughs> negative swapping. Um, and Flint, do you accept that hero work is messy? Not just your work. Everything's messy now. Yep. <laughs> yep. 
Um, but yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And so same deal, mundane up, superior down. Yay, I don't have a negative on mundane anymore. Ooh. Ooh. All right. Um, you might be right. A yeah. literal werewolf. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank I mean, you, Athena. Athena, I guess. Athena. Yep. She will kind of nod and, you know, clearly gets back to like her tablet or whatever, you know, dealing with a million fires at the moment. Um, the, the literal loads of fires. <laughs> in some cases. Um, any last scenes? With the group or queen people before we end tonight's session. I mean, I feel like leaving off in the in the locker room after just mm -hmm. all of that happened uh, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. If anyone had one last remark or comment or scene they wanted to get in, no, I think uh, next week or next time. Yeah, I don't think there's anything left to say, but Chloe definitely hurt the room first. <laughs> Okay. So, uh, in that case, let's go ahead and look at our end of session questions. You know, leaving us plenty of time to do all this, and then don't forget we'll also be doing stars and wishes. Uh, which you know, again, it's been a month since we last played, but stars and wishes. Stars is something you thought another player, another person at the table did was really good, and wishes is the wish you have for the game. But we'll start with the mechanical stuff. So, at the end of every session, choose one. You either grow closer to the team, you grow into your own image of yourself, or you grow away from the team. And each of those has certain things that go along with them. Does anyone want to start so they know exactly how they feel? We're going to grow closer to Flint. <laughs> Same, which I guess is closer to the team. Yeah, I don't know. We're we're we're, we're fighting because it's like closer to the team, but also like inadvertently alienating oh, part of the team. Yeah, but we didn't oh. know that. We don't yeah. know that yet. No. <laughs> yeah, but so yeah, so you both broke the team, and you explain who made you feel welcome. So you can, so you give influence to that character, and if you already have influence mm -hmm. over the, someone else, you shift their labels one up and down, and then you get to choose either theory condition or mark potential. I am getting oh. clearing I will mark potential, and I'm pretty sure I already have influence over Sabrina. Yep. So <laughs> I forgot you can... that you just have Scott as your character picture. <laughs> you have Scott from Monster Prom? <laughs> yes. um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can look at Sabrina's sheet and tell LB which labels to shift. I'm going to say... I'm going to move your freak down one and move your savior up one. Cool, and you've done that? I've done this. Uh, oof. Hmm. I know, my, I'm very, like, I have one, 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 negative one. One's down the board. Uh, I might move your mundane up and your freak down. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right, so that is you two sorted. Uh, well, we are Kevin. What y'all feeling? From both perspectives, I can already call uh, closer because she feels like she owes him. Uh, further away because it feels like uh, abandonment or uh, growing up in the felt because a pretty crazy thing it felt pretty sick. Which one do you think is most appropriate? I don't know. I think I want to give Kevin uh, Kevin's decision first. All right. Uh, I think. I was kind of feeling the same way, but I think I'm going to go with grow closer to the team. 
Uh, I suck to be abandoned at the airport, but I get it. You apologize. And it's the whole team kind of being in trouble together at the end, I think really bought it home is like, it's the first time the shenanigans have really felt team based, I feel like. And so I'm definitely growing closer to the team. Um, I am actually going to give it to Chloe again because the whole airport thing was was fun <laughs> and and teamwork yep so uh, if you already have influence over him yep how does chloe not have influence over flint um because i had a falling out that we started off yeah with. i think we lost it at some point okay uh because he he wasn't there yeah i think that's Oh my gosh, so many things he's been for. Okay, uh, um, ooh, okay, all right. Um, uh, I'm gonna go. No, not. Um, that was too bad. Nope. Um, No, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, we're gonna okay. up, we're gonna up your stage because we're expensive. Um, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna up your stage or superior because uh, you act. I I don't think you can't lower superior. Negative How? two is as low as it goes. Yeah. Yeah, label. So if a label would shift up past plus three or down past negative two, okay. uh, right. no shift at all occurs. Uh, neither of the two labels that would change goes up or down. That you mark a condition. So Do if that. you really feel strongly about doing that, you can have him mark a condition. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Take one day down again. I don't care. <laughs> I, I'll Do, do it. it. Well, it's it's gonna be better for you than. <laughs> I've already abandoned you today. I'm not gonna do even worse to you. All right, <laughs> that's it. We up your stage. Uh, All right. All right. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah. Uh, I have to decide. My clear condition or more potential. And I'm, of course, marking potential. Yeah. Yep. And so it sounds like everyone's camped back. There is one last thing we need to do. Uh, Chloe, your nemesis. Oh, shit. Hold on. I'm going to leave that. Um, oh, okay. She's gonna she's gonna grow closer to Kevin because he covered for her uh, and she really has his back. So she has. Okay. I already have influence. Or I'm getting it. All right. Now uh, let me look at my sheet. It should, because there's the sections on sheet for influence over and influence by. Okay. Should both be. Those should match up across sheets. It should. Uh, I have marked here uh, I'm by all adults. Yep, I do not have you marked. Is that just for marked child? Possibly. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, you can just freely give influence to other people and say that you know you are influenced by them. It's the rejecting the influence and taking it away that is trickier. Well, we haven't. It looks like we hadn't had. It. Yep. Yeah, I added it to mine. All right. Okay. Um. So now let's look at the nemesis stuff as it made an appearance. So, do you think you made any progress on defeating your nemesis, Chloe? No, I. Nope. So mark your doom track. 
start ramping up some momentum. That's kind of what the doom is supposed to do. All right. But, you know, we'll be able, based on things you and I have discussed, we kind of need to get that ball rolling in order for you to really be aware of your nemesis and start defeating it. Oh. Yep. An audience if that's cryptic, well, tough. It's kind of supposed to be. <laughs> You'll find out. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's it for the mechanics of masks for tonight, but let's do stars and wishes now. Um, here, let me put the happier music back on. Uh, all right, so stars and wishes again. Stars are something that you thought another player did that really awesome, and a wish is something you want to see happen in the game. Uh, who would like to go first? Well, I got one of my wishes fulfilled tonight, which will be my star, because. Uh, we got Sabrina and Flint to kiss. Summon Smooch the boy. Well done. Um, and uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, my wish will be uh, to, since I've unlocked my moment of truth, to actually have my moment of truth at some point. Yep. Those are fun. And... Uh back when we played this game originally on this channel. I think most of us waited until like the last session to use them, so we just went boom, 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 boom. But they are kind of supposed to be used just whenever you think makes sense. Um, I think we're coming up to that point with Flint. Yep. Okay, very good. Who would like to go next? I really enjoyed the... Um the tenacity in the airport crew because y'all had to like no it's still going no it's still going guys it's still going like you really had to like figure out clever ways to stop this from happening ours was just like just punch him a bit so i really enjoyed your creativeness oh over there and like trying to like stop this thing with the, the plants mind control like y'all had to do a lot you had to go through the ringer so i really appreciate that um my wish, I think, I, I have a very specific wish, and I, I the wish is that everyone goes to Kevin for their relationship advice. <laughs> and Kevin, All separately? Yes, and Kevin has to, like, figure out how to, one, how much he's going to get involved in it, what he's going to say to each person. I just, that I am here for. <laughs> All right, so David, you are now aware of that. You know, we'll see. I mean, you, you do know. you. I'm just saying. <laughs> I feel like that's on everybody else. I feel like that's oh. just something that David just gets subjected to. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hilarious. It absolutely. If people want to do it, go straight ahead. It's a hilarious story, Pete. Yeah. All right. David or Danae, who would like to go next? I think. My star um, is really cool. Um, I just like it. I like alternate character designs. Whenever I get this, uh, that was really uh, wish. Oh, it is so strong star. Um, I'll come, come back. I, I always split these up. Like. Uh, we'll come back to you, David. What are you thinking? All right. Uh, I think... Star... I don't know what the star for actually getting Reginald to surrender and go in willingly. That was pretty huge, and I think it salvaged the entire thing. Could you imagine? <laughs> Man, we'd be in so much trouble. Uh, so, yeah. And um, Wish. Boy, I have a hard time with Wishes. So,
I'm gonna go with a wish for for I want to see this nemesis. The the wasn't that fun was very intriguing, and I want to see this this nemesis soon. I think my wish is for a close to clear scale figure. Um, I think that she's going to like. I feel like uh, Chrysalis is going to treat it like it's no big deal, but like <laughs> Chloe feels really bad about it, and she's going to like overcorrect the opposite direction, like. Um, you guys ever hear of like the, the drunken peasant who like gets on the horse, falls off one side, gets back, falls off the other side? We're, mm -hmm. we're gonna do a drunken peasant here. Overcorrect. Severe. Alright. Forward to see how that plays out. Oh gosh, let's see. Me. Uh, my star. I know this was basically the same star I gave last time, but again, getting to see Flint engage with family drama and realizing, oh wait. There's stuff going on in his family that's messed up. Uh, and seeing how he handled that. Very good. And then a wish. Hmm. For... I want to see what more fallout there is after the Sabrina and Flint kiss. Oh, I, I totally foresee us having a lot to talk about next session with that. Yeah. But next session may be a little while, unfortunately, as all of our schedules are so in flux lately. Um, I see, <laughs> hoping you've grown up a to-be-continued graphic. I haven't noticed that before. Very nice. Uh, that's my new star. <laughs> um, but... Let's see. Uh, so, chat, I see some of you have come in right at the end here. Sorry. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, catch up on the VOD later. Um, but let's see. GGK, our schedule is normal for a week and a week only <laughs> currently. Uh, so Thursday, we'll be back with Elegant Magics. Finishing that dang time loop arc. It's been like two months since we've been trying to finish it, but we just keep having people unavailable, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Saturday, or Friday, should be back with Neon Souls. I realize, pretty sure I forgot to mention that earlier. That's the Cypher game. Uh, I believe that's coming close to the end of its second season. So you should keep an eye on that. Saturday is going to be Star Power, which is the fate system, and Danae plays in that game. Uh, Sunday is going to be Vason and Thursday's Children. LB is in that one. Uh, and then we'll get back to, you know, keep an eye on our Twitter and our Discord to find out what we're doing Tuesday. Uh, next Tuesday, it sounds like maybe there's going to be a, you know, Discord group watch party of Accepted. So if you want to be there for that. Um, I mean, it's a but, good movie. Yeah. But so uh, keep your eyes peeled there. I don't know if we can really broadcast that because I think that technically violates some kind of thing. So, you know. Uh, you know, you can we'll sync up when to watch it, you know, acquire the movie on your own in a completely legal manner, and we'll say, okay, three, two, one, go, like we're doing Dark Side of the Moon and Wizard of Oz. Anyway, uh, does anyone have anything they want to plug or promote before we sign off this evening? All right, getting uh, a lot of we're all good from my cast and crew, so thank you to my players for indulging me in my superhero shenanigans this evening. Thank you to the audience for hanging out with us, whether you're here live on Twitch or in the future on YouTube. Uh, thank you. Uh, you should come hang out with us in our socials, um, you know, our Twitters and our Discords. Uh, we also have some merch that none of us are sporting, but we've got, you know, shirts and mugs and all sorts of, you know, phone cases and stuff that is 
usually quotes of ridiculous things we say in our games that make no sense out of context, but it's silly. We have a good time here. Um, that's it for us. So until next time, everyone, good game and good night, Internet. Thank you.